Beshem Hashem Naase Venasliach, we begin Masechet Baba Batra, which is the longest Masechet in Dapim, weighing in at 176 Dapim, so this will take a while. However, it is not actually the longest in words. The longest in words is Masechet Shabbat, then Sanhedrin, then Chulin, then Baba Kama, and Baba Batra is actually the fifth longest in words. So why is it so much longer in Dapim? The reason is because Rashi is not printed. Um, Rashi is very succinct, but Rashi does not, is not printed for Masechet Baba Batra. Instead, we have the commentary of Rashbam, Rashi's grandson, and one of the Balea Tosafot, which uh, his commentary is much longer and takes up a lot more room on the page. Also, a lot of long Tosafots in Masechet Baba Batra. And so, therefore, relatively, there are fewer words on each daf in Baba Batra. And here we go. First Mishnah. Hashutafin sherasu lasud mechisa bechaser bonin et hakotel baemsa makom shenagul ibnot gevil gazit kefisin lebenin bonin hakol keminhag hamedina. All the Masech Baba Batra is going to be talking about property law, and in fact, this is the third gate, right, of one long Masech called Masech Nezikin that has thirty chapters, and uh, that's very long, so it's split up into three units: uh, Kama, Metzia, Batra. Batra means the last. Uh, the third unit of this long Masechet. So this is talking about uh, property laws of a courtyard that is owned by two people, that's uh, two partners, and they decide, Ratsu, that they want to split it and they want to build a wall. So uh, then uh, if if they agree to that and they, they're going to build a wall, then they build the wall in the middle. The Gemara will ask, well, where else are you going to build it, right? If they, assuming they own it 50-50, of course, they're going to um, uh, build it in the middle, which means that the wall will uh, take a little bit of the uh, land from this side and from that side, e- side equally. Now, what are they going to build it out of? That depends on the regional custom. If it's a place where generally they'll, they'll build a wall out of non-chiseled stone, that's the widest, then they use that. Otherwise, uh, chiseled stone is uh, less wide. Uh, Kiffy seen small bricks is less wide, and large bricks are even smaller. Large bricks are smaller than uh, uh, small bricks because the small bricks, they would put two rows of them and fill it in with other things, which makes it quite strong. Um, so a couple of rows of small bricks is wider than uh, just one row of large bricks. And everything follows the regional custom. Now, how much width do each of these take? The Mishnah tells us precisely. With non-chiseled stones, they're pretty wide. Each side has to give three hand breaths of his land, and the other side also, altogether six. If they're using chiseled stones, then each gives two and a half uh, tefachim. Regarding the small bricks, they each give two tefachs. If they're using large bricks, then the entire width of the large brick is three tefachim, so they split that evenly, one and a half on this side and one and a half on that side. Therefore, since the law is that they both share in the space and in the expense of uh, buying those the, the material, if the wall should fall down one day, so the uh, area of the wall is split evenly between them, and the stones belong equally to, uh, to, to them, and so they divide the stones equally. And the same law would be true regarding a garden. Um, there's a couple of ways to read this, and the Gemara um, later on will uh, explain further, but the simplest way is a garden which is a place where it is customary to build a partition. You see, unlike here, where we're talking about just a courtyard, that says Ratsu. They have to agree, you want a partition, I want a partition. Okay, so then they join together and build it. Uh, but a garden is a place where generally there is a partition because there you want more privacy than just a regular courtyard. And uh, so uh, each can 
uh, force the other, obligate the other to uh, build, uh, share in the expense and the space of building a wall. However, if it's a field, uh, that which is usually in a valley, um, there the general custom is not to build a wall between two neighboring fields. There's not such a need for privacy out in a, just a, a wheat field. And therefore, if one person only wants to build a wall, he cannot obligate the neighbor to share in the space and the expense of building a wall. Rather, if one of the people, one of the neighbors of a field wants to have a, a wall uh, between himself and his neighbor, then he has to build the entire wall on his side of the border and he would make a mark on the outer side of the wall to show that this entire wall I built on my property so that it, one day if it falls uh, we should know that this entire wall was on my property and so that's what we say here therefore if it falls all of the space under the wall and the bricks themselves all belong to the one who built it and so that's why you need a marker. Now if they both agree that they want to build a wall, that's fine, so then they'll share it. And in that case, they build it in right down the middle, taking uh, uh, half of the width of the wall from this and the ha field and half from the other field. And in that case, they will, have, they will make a border marker on both sides of the wall uh, to show that it was in fact done, done down the middle. And therefore, if one day that wall should fall, the space under the wall and the bricks themselves are divided equally between both of them. Okay, that's the Mishnah. Now, Savruha Mai Mechisa. Back in the beginning, when it says, Shutafin Sherasul Asot Mechitsa, they wanted to make a partition. We assumed, and the Gemara will conclude, that this is talking about a physical wall. They decide they want to make a physical wall. Um, so, uh, but we're going to read another possibility, maybe it just means divide it without a wall. Um, they share space and they want to divide the space. Okay, so right now we're assuming. That what what is a mechitza? Sabru my mechitza guda. It means a physical wall. Kedetanya mechitza takerim shenifresa. Omer lo gedor hazra vena nifresa. Omer lo gedor nitya shemena lo velo gedara hareze kidesh vechaya ba'achar yuta. We can see that the word mechitza means a wall from this baraita where. It says that if there is a, a mechitza, um, a next, uh, of a vineyard that broke. Now, if it's, uh, uh, now you see from the fact that it says it broke, that already is the, um, is a proof because that means it's a physical wall. It's not simply a division of land. This is your land and my land, but rather it's a physical wall that breaks. And one of them says, I want you to rebuild it. So that's already the proof that mechitza means a physical wall. Now let's talk about what is this case. We're talking about a case of a wall between a vineyard and a, and a wheat field. This would be kilayim if you uh, uh, grow a, 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 a vineyard next to wheat. Uh, right next to each other, then they will both be prohibited from uh, any use because of kilayim. So the vineyard is owned by one person and the wheat field by another, and there is a wall between. If there's a wall between, that's good. That will keep them separate. Now, what if the wall falls down? In that case, the owner of the wheat field can tell the owner of the vineyard, rebuild the wall. Now, why is it that way? Both of them will be prohibited, but we see the vineyard as being the one that's causing the damage because vines tend to grow and will encroach into the wheat field. The wheat just stays where it is. Um, so, therefore, it's the responsibility of the owner of the vineyard to rebuild it. As long as he builds it right, rebuilds it right away, both will be permitted. If he waits a while and then, and the, and the vegetation starts growing somewhat, then they will both become prohibited. So he says, build it. And let's say he builds it, but then let's say it knocks, it falls down again. Then the owner of the wheat, fi wheat field has a right to say, build it again. And he can keep telling him that because that's his responsibility. Now let's say it falls down enough times and if the owner of the vineyard says, ah, forget about it, I don't feel like uh, uh, rebuilding it, and he doesn't rebuild the wall and it grows a little bit, then kidesh means they, build, they both become prohibited, the wheat and the vines. And not only that, the owner of the vineyard has to pay for the loss 
of the wheat that cannot be used anymore. Good. So now we've established that the word mechitza uh, means a physical wall. Now, what can we derive from that? Tama derasu, halo dasu, en mechayvin oto. Alma hezek reiya lav sheme hezek. So we see that when you have two fields, now back to the Mishnah, two fields next to each other, no problem of kelaim or any of that. Um, when can they for when when do they have to build a a wall? Not only if they want to. One side cannot force the other side to build a wall. If one wants to, the other one doesn't want to. He says, "No, I'm not participating. You can build it yourself on your side, but I don't feel like building it because that's the language of the Mishnah says that too. If they want to build it, then they have to build it according to the regional custom of using thick ones or thin bricks." That's the that's what they have to fit into, but they don't have to build it at all in the first place. So we see from the fact that it says Ratsu, and it's talking about a physical wall, we learn that if they if one of them does not want to build, then the other guy who wants to build cannot force the his neighbor to build it. Now what can we derive from that? That um, uh, damaged caused by a gaze is not called called damaged. In other words, a right to privacy does not apply when it comes to a field. And the fact that your neighbor is going to be looking into your field and that causes you some damage, it's not you know physical damage, but you know it's annoying to have someone that can come and look in your field. But even though it might be annoying, that's not called uh, damage that you can uh, um, get paid for or force the other guy to build a wall with you. If you don't like it that much, you build you build the wall on your own. Okay, so that's an important principle that we learn from here. But now we say we we reject this. Maybe that's not the correct reading of the Mishnah. Maybe the word mechisa just means a division. As it says at the end of when they're dividing the spoils after a war, right? It says that the division of the spoils, right? This part goes to these part, and that part goes to that 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 part. This just means a division, not a physical wall. But you had a shared courtyard that these two people were using together and then they decide you know what um, I want to uh, split it we want to split it uh, and um, I'm going to use this uh, the left side and you use the right side so they come to make us they make a split they might just make a, a little marker uh, somewhere in the middle but no not building any wall and so that's where you need the permission of both of them that if they both agree that they want to make a division then they do they make a division and then the rest of the Mishnah says once they both agree to divide the land and you know use it exclusively then one can can force the other to build a wall that's the rest of the Mishnah not only how you build it and how how big it is but he said okay now you you agree that we're going to split it all right fine we split it you get the east side I get the west side now um, I want a wall. The other half person has to help and and, uh, and share the cost and the space of the wall. Alma hezek hezek. In this reading of the Mishnah, um, damage caused by gaze is considered real damage, and that's why once we split it, and you have your side, I have my side, I can force you to build a wall because otherwise I say I have a right to privacy, and you're damaging me by looking in. Then we said this reading doesn't make sense because in the beginning of the Mishnah, it shouldn't have said if two people, Hashutafin, the partners, that want to make a mechitza. Why do you say make a mechitza? You should have said that wanted to divide. You don't say that wanted to make a division, right? Uh, when you say make a division, that sounds like it's a wall. If you meant to divide, it would just say a simpler language that wanted to divide. Okay, so we go back to the original suggestion and see if that reads any better. So what are you saying? Mechitza means a wall? Well, in that case, uh, the, the, it would be redundant for the Mishnah to say, Bonin et hakotel. Look at the exact language of the Mishnah. Um, instead of saying, Bonin hakotel, that partners that want to make a wall, they build a wall. It's not normal language to say the wall twice. It would, it would be more uh, uh, smoother to say that partners who want to make a wall, they build it. Just say, Bonin oto, and not repeat hakotel. Um, so by saying hakotel, it sounds like mechitza means 
that partners that want to make that want to divide their land if they once they want to divide their land then they have to make a wall so that would be um, a smoother reading and so it doesn't really fit so well to say that it's a wall and so we answer that if it just said they build it I would have thought uh, that meant a flimsy wall, just something made out of pegs, that that would be sufficient. And that's why it says kotel, which means an actual wall made out of bricks and stones. And so this, we conclude, is the simplest reading. Um, and uh, so to, uh, to summarize, if, uh, two, if you have um, two people that are neighbors and one of them wants to build a wall, you cannot force the other one to build a wall um, when we're talking about courtyards. Um, instead, they both have to agree. And now once they both agree that, yes, we're going to build a partition, then they can't build a, a flimsy partition, but rather what they can force each other to build a proper wall according to the building standards um, in that region, whether it's made out of uh, thick stones or thin stones, and they and they split it down the middle. Now, Bonin Takota Ba'emsa Vechule Peshita. The Mishnah next says that they build it, they build the wall in the middle. Isn't that obvious? Where else are you going to build it? La Sericha de Kadem Had Vera Siyel Habre. Maudetema Masse Amarle, Ki it resai lach Beavira. Betashmishta la it rasai lach. I need it because I might have thought that when one of the neighbors um, uh, uh, is the one that proposes, let's build a wall, and the other one says, okay, fine, I'll agree to that. I might have thought that the second person who agrees can say, listen, when I agreed, I only was agreeing to airspace. That I would, my view would be limited from now on. I'm agreeing that you can build a wall on your side, even though that will uh, go up and take uh, and take up airspace and uh, take up my view. But I did not agree that you can use my a, a part of my land. That's not what I meant. So we might have thought that he can say that. So in the, in that reading, whoever first proposes that they want the the wall has to put the entire wall on their side of the of the property. And that's why it says Ba'emsa, once they agree that they want a wall, then the then each side can force the other to use half of the to put half of the width of the wall on each other's land. Now that we've established that mechitza means a wall, and the Mishnah is teaching only if they both want to build a wall, then uh, they can force each other. But otherwise, uh, one person cannot force the other guy to build a wall. And therefore, we, we uh, concluded that um, a gaze, damage by a gaze, is not called damage. And that's why one cannot force the other one to build a wall. But now we're going to challenge this assumption from six different sources. If you want to memorize them, each one is represented by each of these words. So here's the first challenge from this Mishnah itself. Tashema vechen begina. The next continuation of our Mishnah says, and so too regarding a garden, uh, a place where it is customary to build a partition, each one can force the other to build it. So you see that in a garden, um, uh, the gaze, damage by a gaze, is called damage, and one can force the other to uh, to build a wall. So we see that, yes, it's true. Hezek uh, is Hezek. And we answer, Gina Shane, Kedribi Abba, Damarbi Abba, Amarav Huna Amarav, Asula Dam La Amod Biste Havero, Besha Shehi Omedit Bekamoteha. A garden is different from a courtyard. The beginning of the Mishnah was talking about a courtyard. In a courtyard, you're not doing that much. In the courtyard, you just have some things. Sometimes you do some activity. So there, gazing into the courtyard is not a big deal. A garden is different, as it would be Abba taught, um, because he said, in the name of Rav Huna, in the name of Rav, person is not allowed to stand by the field of his friend when it, the grain is standing, when they have the wheat and it's all grown and the, your, your a neighbor comes and gazes at it. He is uh, he's sending the evil eye. He's like looking at it in a jealous way. And that's not nice. So it's not polite and it causes jealousy, causes bad feelings. Um, and maybe if you think of evil eye in a magical way, it'll uh, cause damage. And so a person is not allowed to do that. So we see that when it comes to a field, 
where the grain has grown, then the hezek is a real thing. Uh, you don't want people, you want privacy. You don't want people staring at it. The same will be true for a garden where things are growing. So there you have a right to say, listen, I, we have, I have a garden here. I want a wall. That then you have a right to force the other person to share building a wall with you. But if it's a courtyard where nothing is growing, then uh, then you cannot. Hold on, in the Mishnah it says vechen, meaning that just like a courtyard, so too a garden. That implies that a garden is the same laws as a courtyard. And we answer, no, the vechen is not going on the entire law, only on the type of stone, non-chiseled, chiseled, once you're building, a, a, a wall, then you have to use the normal building materials that are used in that place. But it's not going on the entire law. And when it comes to a courtyard, there is no hezek re'iyah. You cannot force someone. Whereas with the garden, there is damage by a gaze and you can force the neighbor to build a wall with you. Second challenge, Tashema. Kotel chaseh nafal mechaibin oto libnot ad arba amot. We have a Mishnah uh, coming up uh, soon that says if, yeah, if there was a wall and the wall fell, then the one, one neighbor can force the other to build it up till four amot. Four amot is high enough already that it's not easy to see over it. So you see that one uh, neighbor can force the other to build a wall. Um, this is talking about a chatzed, a courtyard. So don't you see that hezek re'ya is hezek? And we answer, nafal shane. No, if it was there already and it fell, that's different. Since there already was a wall, so then, uh, now it fell, uh, one person can force the other to rebuild it. But that's different if there was no wall to begin with. So this is not a proof that gaze, the damage by gaze is really damaged. Udakadi la, my kadi la. And now we ask, well, what was even the point of the question? In fact, what is this Mishnah even teaching? Isn't this obvious if there was a wall there and it fell down that one can force the other to rebuild it? And the answer is Sefa isteri chalem arba amot ulmala and mechai vinoto. We need the resha just as an introduction to the Sefa that says, um, let's say it was a very tall wall originally and then it fell down. So then one neighbor can force the other to build it up till four amot, but not uh, not higher. Higher than that, you can't force me to build it because all that's necessary is to have a wall that's high enough that you would be difficult to look in. And so that happens to be the old wall was higher, but that's not necessary. And one cannot force the other to build a higher wall. Okay, next challenge. Tashima kofino tolibnot bet shad vedelet le haser. Shema mina hezek reya sheme hezek. If you have a bunch of people, again, as a Mishnah coming up, we're going to see a lot of these sources are future Mishnayot, which makes this sugya a perfect introduction to the this uh, this uh, pedic, um, because we're going to see a lot of the Mishnayot, a lot of the themes that are going to come up later all come up in a row here. Um, so this would be a nice, op- this is a nice opening sugya. Okay, there is talking about different residents of a courtyard. Each one has a house um, that shares a courtyard and each one can force the other to uh, pay money to uh, build a gatehouse and a door for the courtyard. The courtyard opens up into the public domain. So don't don't you see here that um, damage by gaze is called damage because there's people that are walking by and we don't want them looking into the courtyard. We want privacy. And so just like everyone, each of the residents can force each other to make a door to the courtyard, wouldn't that be um, a source that um, gaze is damaged? And so too, for two courtyards next to each other, one can force the other to build a wall. And we answer, Hezekah did Abim Shane. And that case is different because they're building a door from the public domain where there's lots and lots of people walking by. There, you yes, you have a right to privacy in your courtyard or your shared courtyard from the public that are all walking by. But our Mishnah is just talking about two people, two neighbors. So that's it. There's only, uh, there's only uh, uh, two people there or maybe his family, but it's not a lot of people. It's not like a, from a public domain and therefore there's no proof from here. I mean, at least we did learn that from uh, uh, in a public from a public domain, there you have a right to privacy, but that doesn't mean from one neighbor. And now we ask, we ask again, la? Is that really true? If it's for one in, from one individual, there is no uh, damage by gaze. 
את השמה, אין חולקין את החסר עד שיהיה בה ארבע אמות לזה וארבע אמות לזה. היש בה כדי לזה וכדי לזה חולקין. מה לה בכותל? We have a Mishnah later that says that if there is a shared courtyard, then oh, they, uh, you, one cannot force the other to divide it unless there, after you divide it, there'll be four amot for one and four amot by the other. So it has to be at least um, eight amot uh, in length, so that when you divide it, each one has four amot. If it's like seven amot, and then we divide, it's going to be three and a half. That's too small to be usable, and one cannot force the other to divide it. Um, so what do we see? That if there is uh, uh, there is enough four by four, then they divide it. My la bekotel, when it says divide it, doesn't mean divide it with a wall. And we see from here that even with one neighbor, uh, one has a right to say, I want to divide it with a wall. And we answer, la bim sefas be alma. It doesn't say anything about a wall here. It could be just a flimsy division uh, with, uh, uh, with, with some pegs um, that, uh, that divide it, um, but are not a strong wall. So there's no proof from here that one neighbor can force the other to build a wall, only that they would divide it with a little divider. Tashema, chalonot ben milma'la, ben milmata, ben mekenegdan, arba amot. Vetani ala, milma'lan, kedeshe lo yasis vire. Um, we have um, a halacha about two houses that are near each other. So if I'm building my house next to your house, I cannot make a window that is near one of your windows. It can't be um, too near above it, below it, or uh, but the, the space between the two houses cannot be too close. Um, it has to be four amot away. Uh, and there's a Braita explaining that Mishnah. So it has to be more than four amot high. My window has to be higher, such uh, how much higher, such that I cannot look down at the bottom of my window and see into your window. That would be an invasion of your privacy. And similarly, um, uh, above, that if I would stand up and look in the top of my window, if I would be able to see still into the bottom of your window, then that would also be a problem. So it has to be not parallel to your window at all. And the space between the two houses has to be at least four amot, so that my 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 uh, house doesn't darken the windows of your house. I have to leave some space for the sunlight to come in. So what do we see here? That uh, privacy is an, is an important matter. Matter, right? I can't make any windows in such a way that I'll be able to see into your home because Hezek Re'aya is really Hezek. And we answer Hezekah de Bayit Shane. Now that's talking about a house. We have a house, you, have, you, you want to be private. So then you have a right to privacy in your home. And uh, yes, you can't build a, a window in front of my window. However, our Mishnah is talking about a courtyard. Courtyard, you're outside. So, you know, what are you doing? You're doing some, you know, maybe building something outside. Um, but uh, you, it's not, you don't need privacy like you do inside a home. And last challenge, Tashima. Damar Rav Nachman Amar Shemuel. Gaga Samuch Lachatsa. So if I have a, uh, a house and it has a roof, and the roof is overlooking your courtyard. So your courtyard goes all the way up to my house. And so I could sometimes I go up on my roof. So the halakha says I have to make a fence around my roof. Of course, you always have to make a fence around your roof. That's the halakha and the Torah for safety. But here I have to make it actually four amot high, such that even if I'm standing on my roof, I cannot look over and peer into your courtyard. So you see that here is talking about a courtyard, not not a house. And I have to make I have to make make a wall on my roof so that I don't see into your courtyard. Doesn't that prove that um, uh, that Hezek Re'iyah is called damage? And the answer is, Shanei Atam damar lebal lechaser lebal hagag, ledidi kebiyah li tashmishi, ledidach la kebiyah lach tashmishtach, velayadana beheidana silika veatet de is tana minach. No, that case is different because the owner of the courtyard can say to the owner of the house that, uh, uh, and the roof, 
This is listen. I uh, you make use of my uh, courtyard on a regular basis, and you can always, you know you can see when I'm when I'm there. Right every day I go and do certain things in my courtyard. But you you don't use your roof on a regular basis. People would do, wouldn't use their roofs normally. They would uh, go up there to put out fruit to dry or whatever. And so therefore I never know when you're up there or not that I would hide from from my, my activity from you at that time. And that's why when you have a roof you have to put your uh, for amot uh, fence around the roofs because I don't want you when I unknowingly to be looking at me when whatever I'm whenever I'm using my courtyard this is different from court two courtyards next to each other where uh, people have a regular schedule I know when you use courtyard your courtyard and you know and use mine and then I could look over to see oh you're in your courtyard and so then I'll uh, I'll uh, hide uh, things that I don't want you to see in my courtyard so I always know what you're doing and when you're there and you know when I'm there and that way you don't you don't need privacy in your courtyard all the time but you just want and uh, want privacy at those times when you want to do a certain thing and then you can look and see that the guy is not there and therefore we were able to deflect all six challenges and we uh, we leave with our conclusion that in fact damage by uh, by gaze is not called called damage at least regarding courtyards although we've learned a lot of things along the way that when it comes to peering in someone's house or someone's garden or field or if the gazers are in a, from a public domain and there's lots of people in all those cases yes uh, uh, Hezekiah is in fact a real thing and you can demand privacy but from one courtyard to another one cannot and therefore you only build a wall if both parties agree Baruch Adonai Le'olam Amen Amen.